Not so long ago I did a poll where I asked you guys about what game studio you find the most despicable. And pretty much with no contest and to no one's surprise, EA won. I mean, it is well deserved for multiple reasons, but honestly, <laughs> I kinda love EA for how piss terrible they are. Sure, I'll never forgive them for Titanfall and Battlefield, but I guess someone has to be the bad guy and it might as well be EA. Clearly, you haven't bought the new FIFA. The studio I chose though is Ubisoft and I can explain why, but for now let's ask the following question. How did Ubisoft become Ubisoft? You know, what is their one thing? Sega has Sonic. One of the greatest and most attractive characters ever thought of. Square Enix has their daily released AI generated RPGs. Which is why we thought the name Tales of Scuffer Judgeford Fudkia would be perfect. Nintendo has their lawsuits. What does Ubisoft have? Well, the answer is Assassin's Creed and Far Cry, but today I would like to focus on the first one a bit more. There probably was never a game I discussed more than Assassin's Creed, as it's just so bizarre to me that this one game is still being released to this day. And usually when talking about Assassin's Creed, people will have the exact same almost hive-minded opinion. Yeah man, Assassin's Creed was good up until Black Flag, then it went straight to shit. And yeah, Black Flag was a piece of shit. Assassin's Creed 3 was kinda in the middle, so what people are referring to is the Holy Atso trilogy. But was it ever good in the first place? <laughs> well, obviously fucking not. You clicked on the title, you saw the thumbnail, you wrote an essay of a comment saying how much of a stupid I am without watching the video first, you already know that they are not good. But let's just pretend for a second that we didn't do all that and begin our long and twisted journey. In this video we will break down the Atsou trilogy and only these three games. We will not be taking into consideration the freedom edition of Assassin's Creed nor the complete and utter garbage that is Assassin's Creed 1. If you still like it to this day, you are lying to yourself. During my playthrough of these games, I tried to experience them to their fullest, as I try not to be the type of guy who speedruns the game and then complains of how boring it is. I tried to do each type of side quest at least once and finish all the big side quests, like temples for example, Leonardo shenanigans and so on. It was kinda hard at times, but if we are doing the complete breakdown, might as well go in. Now, part of why I despise this game with a passion is that it is fucking awesome on paper. You play as a guy who travels back in time to experience his ancestors' adventures firsthand in search for ancient artifacts left by an even more ancient civilization all set in medieval times with real historical figures while using a hidden blade that pops out of your wrist. Now, all of that is cool only and I can't stress it enough only on paper. Why? Well, what is not a better answer than the game itself? You see, it's called Assassin's Creed 2, because now you have two oh hidden blades, in the first one you only had one. A popular fan theory at the time was that in the third game we will have a hidden blade strapped on right onto our di This game and the trilogy in general follows the adventures of Ezzo Auditore de Firenze, who goes a long way from being a suave playboy to suave playboy with a sword, and that is called character development. Going forward we will separate each game into three chunks, story, gameplay and the platform is mixed in with the open world structure because every game needs to be an open world to be good and that's a fact. So let's begin with the story. So there is this one guy called Desmond and he's, get this, get this, the chosen one. And then he, you guys will never believe this, but there is basically this evil guys do evil things because they are evil and want to rule the world. And then in an attempt to make all the 12 year old freedom fighters wet themselves, Desmond, a generic white woman slash love interest, generic I am tech smart woman and pretty much trademark character at this point called a snarky British person that tries way too hard to be funny. Wait a second guys, we need power down here. There's a line running nearby I can hook into but the wattage is weak. 
Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Anything else you two would like? You know, some caviar, perhaps? Maybe you'd like me to, to knit you a lovely hat. Form a resistance to fight evil, oppressive the shadow, shadow government. government. We love casting spells. Known as the Templiers. And that's it. That's the plot and it never changes through all three games. But how do you fight this evil shadow government that goes as far as having satellites that can scan you through any environment? Well, there is this machine called Animus that basically scans your DNA through which you can access the memories of your ancestors. In our case, it is Ezio Auditore de la 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 la. la, la, la. la. But what does that accomplish? Well, basically, you can learn from their experience to become an assassin and also see where these dudes hid their artifacts that the shadow government is chasing. And the thing that always bugged me is the following. Sure, you know how to do sick kickflips and 360 no scopes, but you lack the muscle capacity for it, nor your organs are ready for such a thing. Desmond is a bartender, not an ultimate WWE watch out, watch out, champion. All this VR training is fucking worthless without the necessary workout. Stop complaining of you fish fuck. It's a brilliant plot written by philosophers that challenge your entire worldview. You are just too dumb to understand it. Okay, get it. And this is ultimately the main, main plot. You evade the government, chase artifacts, talk with the most boring characters ever created, and that's it. The moment I was plugged away from Etso Adventures, I immediately rolled my eyes because I knew that I had about 20 minutes of the most boring writing in store for me. Skip, skip. But when does this game get fucking good? Ugh. Well, maybe it gets better later. No. You're wrong. You have said something that is not factual. How do you feel about yourself? A failure? Yes. And this is the first and the main problem of Assassin's Creed. This story is excruciatingly boring to the point of it being almost unbearable to get through. I'll give you a quick recap and then we'll discuss why it all doesn't work. You play as Ezio and at first he's just a brat who doesn't really work and does pretty much nothing besides parkour, fights and diving into the first vagina he sees. I have plenty of outlets. I meant besides vaginas. But then his family gets killed by an evil guy in a rope, and then he finds out that his dad is an assassino. No, it cannot be. I wanna be an assassino too. Coopers. So he gets trained to be an assassin by his uncle, completely off screen, not even a training montage, nothing. And then you set off on your revenge quest. Now, the first and foremost problem of this game is its impeccable voice acting. Uncle, wait! Why is he so upset? How are you? Come sempre. I have a letter for Messer Lorenzo. I'll see that he receives it when he returns. Returns? I'll let my father know. Yeah, you know, this wasn't so bad after all. I spit it out, Corporal! Oh, Colonel. We are so fucked. Edso is played by Roger Craig Smith, the guy who voices the funny boulder punching man. I told you to leave it alone, Ethan. And he's an American actor with American accent, so seeing him doing the Italian accent feels really, really off sometimes. Mamma mia! Well, to his credit, in Brotherhood he does really get better, and in Revelations it's actually good and feels natural, so props for him. But in the game we're in, it's far from great. I couldn't understand the specifics. But it involves the Medici. Look at the me, I'm Italian, I talk like this, a spaghetti, mamma mia. On your 20 to 30 hour journey, you will never meet a single character you would be invested in. Every 30 minutes, you get introduced to a new guy, to then immediately be forgotten about, because you travel to a new city, and now there are these new guys you're supposed to help, that all have collectively about 10 lines to say to you. Trying to comprehend what guy is your current big bad is also impossible, they switch 
change way too fast, their correlation to each other is also impossible to keep track of, not to mention that they switch so fast you can't even remember why are they bad in the first place. There is this one instance where you finally get your artifact, and then a random homeless guy annexes the whole city and you build up an army, face him and kill him all in the span of 10 minutes of the game's runtime. Which just brings us to the next issue. Pacing in this game is one of the worst I have seen ever. Everything happens way too fast, with no exposition, no dialogue, no nothing. Characters get introduced, then killed, then 10 more characters get introduced, none of them actually matter, have any backstory, no personality, they are just there. You can't even remember their names properly, because you hear them about one time and then boom, now they are this thing, go to this, no no no, no actually go to the new city and now then this guy here, talk to him, no no, no actually, actually go here and do this instead, yeah. This whole back and forth really makes the story feel terrible, it is way too rushed and jumpy, taking you from one plot point to another without finishing the one you started 10 years ago. Writing this script, I failed to name a single character from Assassin's Creed 2 besides Etzo, because they are so indifferent to each other. Each character feels like a brainless robot, lacking any personality or anything interesting really. I am not kidding when I say that Skyrim NPCs have more personality to them than Assassin's Creed NPCs. You're not supposed to be in here. You're not supposed to be in here. You're not supposed to be in here. Another problem with the story is that it feels like it was written by a 10 year old playing with action figures. Edso comes into the city, meets a random bimbo, and out of nowhere they are best friends, ready to die for each other at all times. You would think in the underworld, full of thieves, cutthroats and prostitutes, there would be some trust issues or betrayal, but no. Everyone is a saint except for those evil shadow government guys, oh my god they're so evil. The main villain is also terrible, lacking any charisma or personality, he is evil because he is evil and wants to rule the world and that's it. The thing is, I remember in Assassin's Creed 1 the game was actually showing villains doing things like torturing people or something like that, in this game they are kinda just minding their own business when out of nowhere a hooded chimp drops from the ceiling, stabs them and talks to them about philosophy with a very strong and weird and almost sexual feel to it. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk gameplay. Assassin's Creed has always been a stealth game. <laughs> Assassin's Creed is a stealth game in the same way that Dark Souls is a stealth game. What are you doing, step bro? The game doesn't really have that many stealth mechanics, which is weird. You have no way to manipulate enemies in any way, you can't really sneak around as there is pretty much no way to understand when an enemy can see you or when they can't. As sometimes they see you through walls, sometimes they see you on the rooftops, sometimes they don't see you on the rooftops. And one of the main issues with stealth is that in my opinion a good stealth game will always let the player decide on the optimal path to take, as usually stealth associates with infiltration, and that is always based on choosing the optimal path or method. In this game there is a preset path that the developers want you to take and that's it. And that just brings us to the ultimate issue of this game. This game is more linear than a straight fucking line. You cannot do anything creative, anything fun. The game always pushes you in the way it finds fitting. You will get thrown into a massive castle where you're only supposed to move from one waypoint to another. You can't find an optimal path because the game does everything for you. There is never that awesome feeling of taking your enemies one by one or carefully slipping past them because usually the game guides you on a path of least possible resistance where all the guards will be facing away from you if present at all. Also one of the reasons stuff doesn't work is the enemy AI. 
It's horrible. I might be wrong, but I think this is the way it works. The AI knows where you are at all times. They just don't know if they are allowed to spot you. When you are hiding, they'll look directly at you, but because you are hiding in quotations, they'll just walk away. Same with when you make a noise. The guards will magically know where you are and start to magically walk in your direction. Guards do not react to dead bodies, to gunfire, to you literally stabbing people in front of them. Just all the day's work, I guess. They'll see a corpse and say something on the lines of Must have been the wind. And go on about their day. But what about the combat? Boy, am I glad you asked PNG of a straw man. Assassin's Creed has one of the most horrible, brain dead, and stupid combat systems I have ever seen in a video game. To win any fight in the game, and I literally mean any fight, all you have to do is to hold R2 and mash square. Congratulations, you win any fight ever in the entire game. If you are feeling extra spicy, you can also spam square to insta-kill any enemy in the game. Funny enough, your best weapon is your hidden dagger, as it is fast and the only weapon that can insta-kill anyone in the game. Even the best sword of the game leaves people with 1 HP. Why even use any sword then? Damage in this game is a worse stat, as each enemy is basically an instant kill, so buying any weapon in the game is practically worthless. Even pulling out your sword is worthless. During my whole playthrough of three games, I haven't used the sword more than 10 times. The only disadvantage you have with the daggers is well, you can't have an infinite barrier window, which is fine if you have more than one brain cell. Hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me. You can't. Basically, if you hit an enemy more than three times, it's a guaranteed instant kill. You get a parry with what feels like a three hour parry window, that's an instant kill as well. The only two guys you can't parry are the heavies and the spears, but that's not a problem as you can spam them with attacks and get an instant kill regardless. There is no strategy, no skill, no creativity, you just press one, sometimes two buttons and you win. That's it. No matter the stage of the game or the amount of enemies or their types, your strategy does not change. The enemy variety is also pretty much non-existent. It is there, but it is negligible to a point of there only being two enemies. Once you can parry, and once you can't. Incredible game design. Even in the game made by David fucking Cage, who I'll make a video on in the future, the combat feels more engaging as it revolves on you pressing multiple buttons on different timings instead of mashing square and R2. God, even talking about it makes me so frustrated. This game is so fucking trash, it is not even funny. <laughs> Since the dawn of mankind, everyone knew that to create a new and fresh and western type of game, you need to make it open world. And that is like an unspoken rule at this point. Now, creating an open world game is a very difficult task, especially if you want to make the map Big. Mm. Take GTA 5 as an example, this game is already a timeless classic and the map is huge, but in my opinion this exact map is terrible. It is barely filled with content, there is nothing to explore and driving from one mission to another takes way too long. Ooh! I'm spending two dollars! What a discovery! Open world games are truly amazing! Now GTA 5 is a masterpiece game and is made by Rockstar and Assassin's Creed is made by Ubisoft. Now, take a wild guess. Is open world good in Assassin's Creed? No. The game has multiple big cities that they are supposed to explore, but, and that is not only this game, but pretty much any AAA open world trash game ever, what is there to explore? Your average gameplay of Assassin's Creed revolving open world will be you looking at your minimap, traveling from one waypoint to another, talking to robots, and then going to another waypoint. There are no interesting side quests, no interesting random encounters, no hidden sequences, but I'll tell you what there is. 70, and I'll repeat that if you didn't hear me the first time, 70 
copy and pasted towers for you to climb and unlock a tiny portion of a gigantic map to be shown on your minimap so you can find a blacksmith to buy a sword that makes you weaker with greater ease. Oh and also you have about 100 feathers scattered around the map that you are totally supposed to find without a guide to unlock a new game? Oh wow, incredible, incredible. The open world doesn't work and looking forward it will never work. The game takes a huge emphasis on hiding and blending with the crowd, which is honestly worthless. Through this whole game I have never had an instance where I needed to hide from someone, as it would take 10 times longer than fucking killing everyone. You never have to blend, as the only place where it is useful is the enemy outposts, where there is nowhere to blend. <laughs> Ironic. Side quests are your average copy and pasted garbage, but the rewards are the funny part. The game doesn't know how to reward the player properly. You get an unreasonable amount of money for the main quests and complete peace for side quests and collectible chests you find. The game pretty much never rewards you with gear or anything cool, it is always just money. And the funny thing is, money is pretty much worthless, there is no reason to buy armor as the armor you get for the actual fun quests is the best armor in the game and there is no reason to buy any weapons because they are completely worthless. What do you do with the money then? Well, you can play some Animal Crossing and an actual better version of Animal Crossing because here you can actually buy the fucking paintings. You hear that you fucking fox motherfucker. But that's it really. Now the other gimmick of Assassin's Creed has always been the platforming or the climbing rather and I will give the game credit where it is due. The ability to just run up to any building and effortlessly climb it feels good and fresh even to this day. But there is a problem to that. An absolute highlight of the game Game are the temples, where you get the keys for Altair's armor, which is for some reason black and Altair was always wearing white armor? Uh, damn you Netflix for ruining my favorite game Killer's Code! And the reason it is a highlight is because it's an actual level that is handcrafted to be played and enjoyed, with cool sequences, handpicked enemy places and puzzles. Not anything revolutionary by far or amazing, but not bad regardless. Probably the only thing that was exciting about Assassin's Creed 2 for me. Nevertheless, on these levels, despite them being really epic looking and cool, you realize just how much of a slop this game is. Now listen closely. Here's little lesson in platforming, this is going down in IGN. If you wanna be an assassin number one, you have to press a 2 and cross at the same time. Just follow my inputs and climb around. Be careful not to use your brain. Shh! No, don't touch that. We're Assassin's Creed. Hey! This whole platforming that you'll be doing for pretty much half the game is you pushing the analog stick forward while holding R2. Everything about this game is automated. Game does a parkour for you, game fights for you, game tells you where to go, and you're just sitting there watching a Tommy Wiseau movie. Everybody betrayed me. I fed up with this world. <laughs> this game is an equivalent of that live channel every popular YouTuber has, where they only post literal slop and oh, get used from it regardless. Oh, By the end of the game, it really tries way too hard to stretch out its runtime. At a certain point you are forced to do 9 side quests, because the game just gives up at trying to come up with anything new. And by the end of the game it just so happens that the optional collectibles become mandatory, just to pad out the runtime even more. And all that just to watch the most blatant and dumb sequel bait of the century. Get it over with then. No, killing you won't bring my family back. I'm done. Yeah, it seems I was not the only one to play Last of Us 2. God, I just can't wait to come home to my wife and three kids. <laughs> 
Oh boy, it's my retirement tomorrow. Can't wait to see my grandkids. I fucking hate this game. Now, first things first, this game is just blatant false advertising. This is the first Assassin's Creed game I have ever played when I was a kid, and just look at that box art. You look at this and just go, uh, uh, are these the bad guys? Uh, are they the good ones? As a kid, I really like the Plague Doctors. Hell, I still do love the designs of their costumes, and what do you think this guy's role in the plot is? <laughs> Uh, did you miss him? Too bad that was his only appearance in this whole fucking game. What about this one? Uh, there he goes. This one? Same thing. This is because these guys are for the online mode, which we'll discuss a bit later. For now, let's talk about the story. Now, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood is clearly the strongest of the bunch. Characters actually exist and talk, there is an actual villain this time that does things, instead of just popping out of nowhere saying something on the lines of I'm so evil, and then disappearing. There is some tension between the ranks, although that doesn't go anywhere because it was that one random guy that you saw the way from the start of the game, it was obvious he was a traitor from the get go. There is this really forced love plot between Desmond and the boring white woman, and if you have watched more than one movie during your lifetime, you already know where this is going. It is done. The characters you forgot even existed by this time talk a lot more. Now, not great by any means, but leagues better than the dumpster fire that is Assassin's Creed 2. But the story overall is still kinda bad, and even well-crafted characters like Leonardo and Machiavelli cannot carry this idiotic and boring plot. But before we start deconstructing it, let's first talk about Desmond and Ezio. They are Awful. Desmond has a personality of a brick, slightly larger brick than the one that was in Assassin's Creed 2, mind you, but still brick. He's not interesting to talk about, he's not fun to play as, all the sequences where this Adam Sandler lookalike is featured feel like a downtime. And Ezio is not much better, Apple from the Apple and all that. He's just the most boring and generic main character, extremely overconfident and never punished, a literal one-man army with no weakness and the most generic personality ever. He does not evolve, he does not grow or develop as a character, he's always the same male marries you. He even kinda reminds me of someone. Although he's basically a meat grinder by this point, that murdered countless amount of people, he does not change. At all. <laughs> You're probably dead! Now let's talk about the story, and there is not much to uncover. Every problem assassins are faced with is solved by dressing in a costume that pretty much always perfectly fits, despite armor being usually crafted specifically for the person wearing it, but you know, I've played Hitman, I can live with that. There's a strange man carrying a weapon. Do we have a description? Bald guy. White, scary eyes. He was in a white button shirt and black trousers. Stay here, it's safe. I got this. But oh my god, do they use this trope so many times. It just starts to feel so dumb and cheap. Speaking about dumb and cheap, check out this ending. Woo! You spend this whole game building up your brotherhood of assassins. You recruit them, you send them on the missions, you make alliances with old friends, for that all to be pointless. You get the apple, destroy everyone, and kill the main villain solo, with no help. By the end of the game, the story gets way too jumpy. It might have been the lack of budget, at least it feels like it, as I can't confirm if that was the case, but things happen way too fast and off screen. You beat the main villain, he gets taken away, escapes and builds his army in the span of about one minute, for you to then magically find him off screen and yeet him from a tower. What? And then another sequel bait, white woman that had about 10 lines of dialogue to this whole series dies, really sad, end of the game. And yeah, this is kinda sad actually, because the game starts strong, it keeps the pacing intact, the voice acting is better, the characters are better, and the ending just kinda ruins everything. Keep in mind, better does not necessarily mean good, it means better than the complete crap that is Assassin's Creed 2. 
remember what I said about Assassin's Creed 2 combat? Well, forget it, because Brotherhood has hit a new low. This combat is a peak of dog shit. Now, every enemy in the game is parryable and insta-killable, so the little enemy variety that we had in Assassin's Creed 2 is completely gone. Not to mention, after a parry, you can immediately one-shot people that are close to you infinite amount of times, so now you can effortlessly kill a whole population of China by just mashing square. I am fucking cracked at this game. You cannot make the combat more dumb if you try, holy fuck! Spamming counter on all weapons makes you literally invincible, just like spamming dodge on V in Devil May Cry 5, but this dodge actually kills people. I once went to take a shit and did not feel like pausing, so I gave my girlfriend a controller and told her to mash R2 plus square. She killed 12 guards and did not receive a single point of damage. Not to mention that dying in this game is a challenge. Look at these two idiots trying to kill me. It is laughable how bad this game is. There are completely no risks, no threats in these games. I have never felt more invincible in a video game, even when I was playing a Yakuza game. Check out these elite guards that are supposed to be really strong. Gone in a millisecond. It was kind of the same in Assassin's Creed 2, but at least you had to dodge once in a while against spears or heavy dudes. Uh, not in this game, however. Once again, swords and daggers make you weaker, so there is no reason to buy them ever. The animations are cool, I'll give them that, but they serve no purpose otherwise. Do they offer something new? No. Do they have some niche functions? No. Do they change how you approach fights? No. Are they just there to deceive the player into thinking that they're is some variety? Yes. Well, actually I lied, because swords are now used to kill horsey dudes, which you fight about um, num, 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 two times throughout the game. Also Assassin's Creed Brotherhood decided that the strongest aspect of Assassin's Creed 2 were the trailing missions, as in this game all you do is trail someone. Seriously, it was annoying in Assassin's Creed 2, but there were only like 12 of them. It sounds like a lot, but in this game there were like 30 or 40 of those. I kid you not, in the game called Assassin's Fucking Creed, the word follow or tail appears more than kill. This game is a fucking joke, but a joke with a hoe and whopping one minigame. <laughs> now to the stealth credit, it got some improvements. Some of the sections feel really good, but still just as scripted as they were before. Rarely you will have any freedom in deciding how you want to kill your target, but when you do, it will feel like a literal blessing from heaven. Now, what I did like were these new synchronization thingies. Basically, each mission will have a certain thing you need to do in order to get a full synchronization. These things unlock new missions that dive into Edsel's backstory a bit more, which is, you know, pretty neat, and make the stealthy approach more interesting. And by this time, I realized that the best stealth approach in this game is to just run past guards. As the game is extremely forgiving in every single way, Gods take way too long to spot you, so you can literally run past every single one with ease. Kojima is fucking shaking over these stealth mechanics, I am telling you. So I have no other possible explanation for this, but it really seems like the developers of this game decided that people that play these games are toddlers, which is, you know, you Fair. just play the game cause you don't fucking care about the passion these people put into the story and all you care about is just the action in game. But even the platforming got more brain dead. Game rotates the camera for you, game shows exactly where you're supposed to jump to. I was really eager to see if the game would press the buttons for me, but sadly no, not there yet. The open world got an improvement, that's for sure. Instead of five gigantic cities we have one, but it's way more detailed 
enabled, which is the way to go. You have these cool elevators now, there are actual side quests involving actual characters that want you to do something besides killing two guards or trailing someone. The highlight of this game is Leonardo's quest that let you use his war machines, not anything revolutionary by any means, but for this game it's fucking gold, diamond even. <laughs> any other side quests though are a complete and boring waste of time, but the other ones are pretty well crafted, actually good job. I don't even know what to say here, the only thing that is on my mind is a small message to Ubisoft. Please, for the love of God, stop treating your players like they're brain damaged or toddlers. The latter one might actually be the target audience, but nevertheless. Unsubscribe from you glitch because you hate Assassin's Creed. Fuck it's good, fuck you, you don't get it. And the story is a daytime program on a sci-fi channel? Jesus Christ, can you at least try to write something satisfying? The game starts with a really cool cinematic, and oh my god, what has happened to voice acting? Today, I have more questions than answers. Is it. Is it. This is, is it why I've come to voice so far acting? To find clarity. No way, and I was wrong. I would like your opinion on something. Now, this game is weird. Despite there being pretty much no changes to the gameplay loop, there are a ton of ideas that are implemented here, both poorly and well. But as usual, let's start with the story. It's really bad. Pretty close to Assassin's Creed 2 in terms of quality, but not for the same reasons. Despite characters actually doing something and even dying sometimes, this story feels weak. The main conflict is poorly explained and we don't even get to see the main characters of this conflict up until the very end of this game. The game takes place in Turkey and... Wait, did you hear that? Oh my god, run! Basically, the apple that you were working so hard to get in the last games doesn't matter, as there are actually a lot of these apples. So, Atso has to find all five keys to open Altair's vault and find the second apple while also taking part in Ottoman conflict. If it sounds simple, that is because it is actually simple. It is a simple, boring story with the most predictable outcomes every single time. And it's not like every single game needs to have a story on pathologic scale that challenges your entire worldview. No, simple stories work when they are done right in a satisfying way. I have a whole video dedicated to exactly that topic, but the reason Assassin's Creed stories don't work is because they are not satisfying, filled with plot holes, boredom every single second, unengaging dialogues, cheap twists and the most blatant sequel baiting in existence every single time. You also can place Altair now and uh, who fucking cares? I sure don't. This guy was a robot in Assassin's Creed 1 and not much has changed in this game. As I am writing the script right now, after I finish the game, I don't remember a single thing about the story. It feels like I just went to McDonald's and, you know, when you go to McDonald's, you're not expecting a five-course meal, you're expecting, well, McDonald's. Same with this game. I open Assassin's Creed and I'm not expecting a good game. I am expecting a game made by Ubisoft. Combat has not changed. It is still brain dead, effortless, bottom mash kill everyone with no effort. And don't get me wrong, not every game has to require you being on 10 tons of cocaine to be beaten, but when there is no challenge or threat at all times, 
the game is just pure garbage. Know your fucking place, trash. But what you get now are bombs and hook blade. And they do matter. Bombs are really interesting when I first look at them with a ton of cool customization options and that is cool until you realize that they all are the exact same. You have three bombs, lethal, escape and diversion ones. Lethal ones are the most dumb. You have shrapnel, which is an instant kill. And then you have the poison one and the injury one. Now the question, what is the fucking point of both of them if shrapnel is an instant and kill. Why would I bother poisoning or injuring them? Same with gunpowder, that is supposed to change the range of the bombs, and there is not a single instance where you want the range of your bombs to be small. Escape bombs are the most different ones, but pretty much all do the same thing. You throw them and then you can insta-kill everyone or run away. Something that you can already do by pressing square, but nevertheless. And the distraction bombs are, well, distractions that work the exact same, except for the coins, because it is something you can already do by default, which makes them completely worthless. It's like the developers cannot introduce a single mechanic without completely and utterly making it garbage. Now, hook blade is pretty cool with no downsides. Who would have guessed? Climbing becomes way more free and easy, and that is a good thing. Climbing always was a downtime in this game. Although the game emphasizes it a lot, it gets really boring as you're basically just pushing the analog stick forward and hoping for Esso to not be autistic for once. <laughs> Because the platforming is so boring, I really like the hook blade. It makes the feeling of effortlessly climbing any building in the game way more enjoyable. You can fuck around with enemies a lot, which I found to be really fun. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, whoop. I am here now. Oh, whoop. Ooh, so close. Oh, and just die. Finally, a good mechanic with no downside. Authority mechanic has been completely thrown out of the window, removing it takes way too long and gaining it is extremely easy as for some reason renovating shops grants you authority. Not that it matters anyway, because only Templars attack you with full authority, Ottomans kinda don't give a shit. And Ottomans are the guys you'll be finding 90% of the time, Templars are extremely rare and usually attack you on sight regardless. Seeing when your training would begin. Sunrise, every day. Galata Tower. Understood? Uh, Edit. Of course, Mentor. Was that the bite of 87? Now, there is also one feature that is really good with this game. Genissaries. This is what the game needed. They look badass, they're strong, and you actually have to improvise to kill them. They will use their pistols, counter your hook plate, counter your attacks, dodge, negate your kicks and grabs. It is cool. You pretty much never fight them, but they are cool. I really like this enemy design. But other than these few improvements, the game is still boring to play. Parkour is fully automatic with pretty much no engagement, combat is a giant QTE, well th that's wrong, as it is even worse as QTE are harder to press than this shit. Exploration is pointless and non-existent and even worse than before as all those cool side stories I mentioned in Brotherhood are gone and the story is well, sequel bait into sequel bait into sequel bait into another one. Jesus fucking Christ, I hate this game. The game's existence and popularity is still so baffling to me. How is this game the one that pretty much represents Ubisoft? It is an accurate representation, don't get me wrong, lazy and terrible, but the the game was considered good, but then again, there are people who find Reddit good, or Twitter, or some that consider Forspoken Combat stylish, Jesus fucking Christ. These games are a prime example of press analog stick forward to win, capture the tower and so on. Never try to do anything fun or creative, no, you, the player, is dumb. 
and uneducated. Let the geniuses at Ubisoft show you how to play the game. You will follow the quest markers and don't you dare stray a single meter away from them or we will kick your ass out and don't you dare try to use your brain. We are the developers, we know what to do and when to do. You are just following orders, not playing the game. That is why, gameplay-wise, the game doesn't work. Ideally, a game's story should make you feel like a part of the game's world, not the actual world itself. Ezio is always a solution to every problem. He is boring as he is flawless. His judgment is always correct and he is undefeatable. His allies are brainless puppets accomplishing nothing and giving quests that Ezio completes. That's why, story-wise, the game doesn't work. Open world is garbage and only a tiny fraction of teams can make it work. And I hate this game even more for popularizing this trope. And yeah, I think that is all there is to say about this game. And what pisses me off the most is that there is a game there, somewhere, buried deep within 300 layers of shit, there is really some potential. And by this time we already know that it has not been approved upon. In fact, it only gotten worse. I think the reason I despise Ubisoft and Assassin's Creed in general is that when a game is bad, I'm talking Battlefield 2042 level bad, it is laughable. I can watch people molding on Twitter, I can laugh at all the people who still pre-order games in 2023, and I can laugh from all the dumb bullshit that is going on. But this? This just makes me depressed and angry. And in my opinion, and keep that in mind that it is very subjective, a painfully mid game is way worse than a terrible one. Wait, are you a Redditor and you're a Discord admin? Oh my god. And since I'm such a nice guy, I will adjust my fedora, hug my body pillow, and I will tell you how to make Assassin's Creed actually good. I am aware of your current financial situation Ubisoft, so this one's on me. Ditch the open world system entirely, you will never make it work. And generate open areas like Dishonored did. Give up on the side quests entirely or go for what God of War did, where it is clearly quality over quantity. Completely rework the combat and climbing to make the gameplay loop more engaging. Oh, and the most important tip, stop being so fucking greedy. Instead of focusing on building a new map, why not just recycle an old one, make it slightly better and then focus on the more pressing issues. Hire actual writers instead of AI generating your dialogues, put voice actors in the same room, actually make the player engage with the game more, ok Ubisoft? But this video already has a lot of negativity in it, so I thought that Hey, maybe we can end it on something good, yeah? And oh boy, do I have the thing for you! Now, there is a certain feature to this game that like 90% of people that played the game are unaware of, and I am of course talking about the multiplayer. Now, multiplayer for Assassin's Creed is amazing and I loved every second of it. In multiplayer, you play as the bad guys who you kill in the single player. Now, I only played multiplayers for Revelations and 3. I have never played any others, but the ones I played were genuinely very fun. Now, the multiplayer have been completely cut off by Ubisoft, which is really sad, but I have a pretty strong recollection of how it used to go down. Basically, you have this mid-range map filled with bots. Only thing they do is walk around and talk to other bots. Bots are one-to-one -one copies of the players in the lobby and there are 8 players. Each player is presented with a contract to kill another player. The more stealthily he does it, the more points he gets and the higher on the leaderboard he goes. The higher he is on the leaderboard, the more people is out to get him. If you see that someone is trying to kill you, you can stun them and they will lose their contract on you, but the kill is always prioritized. So what you will have is this literal masquerade where people will try to blend in with the environment, but when the shit starts to go down, it will be really 
fun. There are certain tools you can use to escape your pursuer, and once the chase starts, if you don't catch them on time, you lose the contract. There are perks, there are cool abilities, I remember smoke bomb being a literal must, as you can get a guaranteed stun on your pursuer, and then people will get really creative and bait the smoke bombs, you will have kill streaks, losing streaks, team balls, which was just pure chaos, and oh god was it fun. The game was just dumb. Fun, and that's what was cool about it. Nowadays, every game has to be esports ready, Valorant tier garbage. And to be honest, I really miss games like these. I remember me and my buddies would hop on Assassin's Creed 3 multiplayer on Xbox 360 and just laugh our asses off. And I'm telling you, the one who can emulate this game into a standalone, more polished title will hit the gold mine, I'm sure of it. Here we go! <laughs> Hey guys, apologies for being absent for so long, I was moving to a new place. Now that I'm here, videos should progress smoothly, but if you want to see more of my whining, you can follow me on Twitter, where I post only, only the best, the best things. Also today this channel celebrates one year. On May 5th I posted this cringe, don't, don't, don't watch it, it's really bad, but nevertheless. Magic School Pass is now a year old and we are looking strong. Thank you for the support and nice things you keep typing. Love you all and I'll see you in the next one. Only I get to decide who is the assassin of our creed. Yeah!